as impressive as this particular pattern looks, uh, it's really pretty simple. And no matter how big the grid, um, it really boils down to creating a square background grid, filling it out with a diagonal, and then a few other parts. And then you just repeat that for as many squares as you've got in the grid. So that's about it. So really, um, there's only three uniquely sized shapes once you make the grid. So the key there is to figure out a way to cut each end to the exact bevel, um, to the exact length, so they fit in place in a nice slip fit. Um, I go about doing that with a pair of blocks. Um, uh, this is the method I use. There's a lot of different methods, ways to go about it. I use a short chisel, nice and sharp, uh, to cut each piece both to the correct length while beveling the ends at the correct angle. So these blocks have a few different, couple different angles on them. Uh, there's a 45 degree angle, there's a 22 and a half degree, a very shallow angle, and then a 67 and a half degree uh, steeper angle. And because there's three angles and four sides, that particular angle is duplicated. And because we're going to be using both of those angles at the same time later on in the pattern. So if you got a set of blocks, this is what you've got. You've also got this little bundle of uh, sticks, some of them not, some of them not. This is enough to create a single square of the pattern to get you off and running. And uh, while I do include some instructions, you know, I don't know, sometimes it's easier to see it done as opposed to read about it. So I wanted to show you how I go from here and here to create a nice little Kumiko square that will get you an idea of what's involved in the craft. Um, hopefully get you excited about it and get you doing some more, at least tell you what's involved. So I got a sharp chisel, a bundle of sticks, screwdriver, a couple Kumiko blocks, uh, a saw to trim the parts to length, and a pencil, and that's it. So a really, really small tool set. Um, let's get going. So basically you've got uh, three notch sticks. That creates the background grid. That's where we're gonna start. The plain sticks are what we're gonna use to fill out the individual squares to create the pattern. I'm gonna put those aside for now. And basically each one of these sticks is gonna get cut roughly in half. And that's gonna give me six pieces to create a square grid. Now you could cut those any way you want. Um, a cool thing about these blocks is there's an extra groove along the bottom, which the stock coincidentally fits in quite nicely. I can use this to create a little saw hook if I want to cut all my parts to length because I'm going to be using this quite a bit while I'm cutting the other parts to length. It's not critical how clean the edge is. It is pretty critical later on that we at least try to cut the, the cuts nice and square. So before I cut them to length, Clamp it in a vise, pull out a square, make a couple cuts just to get that started, and then saw down all the way to the bottom of the trench. And that's it. So now we've got a cutting. Slide my stock into place. Just get it roughly centered between the two middle notches and give it a cut. I'll go ahead and repeat that two more times. With parts cut to length, this is a super easy part. It's just a matter of putting those little notches together to create a half lap joint. And I often put a dab of glue in each joint just to hold the grid together a little bit. That's about it. So what was that? I don't know. 10 seconds and we're good to go. 
Okay, so the next step is to start filling out the grid uh, with pieces of wood. And where I want to start is I want to start by creating diagonals that radiate out from the center. And in order to do this, I'm just going to hold a piece of stock in place corner to corner and cut it just a little bit long, about a sixteenth of an inch oversize. The idea is that I want to get the both ends beveled and still leave a little bit of room to dial in the length without starting out too short. So for this cut, because they go in at 45 degrees, I'm going to start with the angle of the block set at 45 degrees. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to cut a bunch of pieces to length. So I've got four squares. I need one per square. I'm going to give myself a couple extra pieces to practice with in case I overshoot that length so I can make a little tick mark on the bottom and I'll go ahead and cut out six pieces. Okay, with my little pieces cut to length, I'm going to go ahead and set up the stop block with a 45 degree angle because that's the angle in which the pieces are going to fit into the square. So that's pretty simple. Now the angle is what's going to determine the bevel at the ends on the stock and a little sliding stop is going to help dial in the length so we can cut a lot of parts to the same consistent length. I'm going to start by putting a little piece of stock in place. I'll adjust the stop so it's sticking out just a little bit. Now the other little thing that came with the bundle of sticks is a little hook and I use this to hold the stock in place while keeping my fingers away from my edge. So I'm going to start just by taking really light cuts with my chisel and my final pass um, is with the chisel just dead flat against the surface. That's why I prefer the chisel rather than a hand plane because a hand plane will cut into it. You just have to make your jig in a little bit different fashion to accommodate for that. I tend to like to use a chisel because it's really quick. I'm typically not doing overly large panels and I find that it's a really efficient way to go about doing it in smaller scale designs. Okay, so I beveled, flip, beveled, rotate the other end. So now I've got a piece of stock with 45 degree angles on each end. Uh, most likely this is going to be a little bit too big. Uh, actually, that's too small. So I'm going to kick the, the stop back just a little bit and we're going to try it again. Uh, it's a good thing I've got a couple extra pieces. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to put this piece back in place and I can move the stop back until this piece is just slightly inset. So I'm going to use this as a guide for setting my stop. Um, let me try it again. Flip it, bevel the other side. So that's about the fit I want. I want to be able to press it in without deforming that grid out of square, but snug enough to where it doesn't rattle around and if I lift it up, it won't fall out. Now, ideally, if the stop block is set up correctly, I should be able to knock out the remaining diagonals uh, without having to move it. So this is when things get going really pretty quick, is once you dial in that stop block, then the idea is that you can keep going without having to mess around and cut them to length. So I'm going to continue on until I get all the cross pieces in place. Okay, so with 
the four diagonals in place. That went pretty quick. Uh, the next step is to add these little pair of parts. I call them kind of little wings. They bisect that angle at 22 and a half degrees. And then finally, we're going to add this third piece, this little keystone, which is going to lock everything in place. So these little guys are interesting. The ends where they meet the corners are really skinny angle, 22 and a half. And in the center, there's a 67 and a half degree angle there with the bevel slightly off center. So that's why I want to use both of my 67 and a half degree ends in conjunction with each other. Stop blocks are slightly offset to create a bevel that's slightly off center. Uh, probably sounds more complicated than it is. Let me show you how to go about doing that. The first step in making those little wings is to cut our pieces to length. So, if I hold a piece of stock corner to corner, that just tells me my center line between those two pieces. I want to roughly angle this about, you know, split that angle and then make a mark where it meets the center and just make it just a little bit longer. And then I can cut my pieces to length there. And I need a bunch of these. So instead of one per corner, I now need four per corner. So in a small pattern, that's 16. Go ahead and cut 18. And I will meet you back here. I've got my parts cut. I'm going to go ahead and set up the stop blocks. I'm going to be using a pair. So I'm just going to mount them in my vise um, together side by side, angle them a little bit so that I can use each face without running into the other one. So now with my stops, I'm going to set up one stop. So the workpiece is sticking out just a little bit. I'm going to cover a bevel just on one side. Now I'm going to take that same piece with that same bevel up, temporarily put it in place to set the up stop. Here I'm going to set the stop so this work piece is sticking out just a little bit, just so I can feel it. The idea is when I flip it over, because it's a different depth stop length and I make a cut, that center point, instead of being right in the middle, is hopefully going to be offset just a little bit. Let's see how I did. Okay, so that's pretty good. So it's basically roughly about two thirds, one third. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And so now I'm going to cut all the pieces, one end of all the pieces. The first bevel on one block, the second bevel on the other. So I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of pieces with this off-center bevel on one end. And then just the rough sawn end on the other, which we're going to tackle once all these pieces are done. So go get to work. This is going to take a little while. This is sort of the longest part of the whole process. The rest will speed up pretty well after this. So go get going. Okay, with all those bevels cut, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the last angle of the blocks we haven't used yet, which is the really skinny angle or 22 and a half degrees, which sounds fancy. Uh, it's just half of 45. start by setting the stop block so I can take as little material as possible off of there and still get a bevel. So I'm sticking it out to where it's about maybe just about half the thickness of the stock is sticking out. And to fit this particular piece, we actually have to bevel a pair of pieces and fit them at the same time to determine if we're at that right length.
So I've got a pair of pieces. I'm going to fit them in with that skinny part of that offset bevel toward the diagonal and put the angled piece we just cut into the corner. And ideally they come together where they're tight in the corners and there's no gap where they meet. And I actually got lucky this time around. Uh, if they're too long, they're just going to ideally, they're going to start out too long. They're going to kind of sit up like that and you're going to have to keep pairing the ends until they fully seat while those pieces meet in the center. So let me go ahead and bevel the rest of these and then we can fit that little keystone in. Okay, I've got all the wings in place and you can see that pattern is really starting to come together. The last little task is to fill out these little uh, empty spaces with short diagonals. We've already done this. These are just 45 degree pieces, just like the big diagonals. They're just a little bit shorter. So again, I'm just going to get a pencil, hold it corner to corner, Start out with a piece that's just a little bit longer, cut those to length, and then set up my 45 degree stop. All right, I've got my stop set to where I got one of my little keystones fit into one of the corners. Rather than going ahead and cutting all the keystones to length now. What I find is at this stage in the pattern, because of the discrepancy in the length of the parts, um, I find that if I get a setting to where a keystone fits in one corner, typically it'll fit in at least half of the other corners. And on the other ones, it's either, either gonna be too long or too short. So I cut these one at a time and I fit them as I go until I run out of spaces that this particular length will fit in. And I'll make another adjustment with the stop block. Typically I only have to make one more adjustment in order to fit, fit the other half. So I'll keep going and fit. If I need to adjust the stop block once or even twice, it's no big deal. That's it, the last piece knocked in place. That completes the pattern. You can leave all the parts dry fit like this if you'd like, or you can pull them out and glue them. I pull out one square at a time and I glue them back in place in the exact order that I put them in um, and then move on to the other squares. That way I can sand the whole surface flat on some 150 grit sandpaper on a flat surface. You can leave these tabs long, maybe trim them to a consistent length and maybe kind of chamfer the corners a little bit with sandpaper or you can saw them flush um, to create a nice square. So hopefully this isn't, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, too fussy looking, too complicated to um, know I'm not going to try that because it is a lot of fun and I, I hope you give it a try and if you did already purchase a set of blocks, um, I certainly hope this helps you uh, find your way to making your first square. All right, thanks a lot. I'm Mike Pekovich, and uh, it's been a pleasure to hang around for just a little bit. Take care.